Yeah, 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 it's always full. Uh, words. I see an Asian guy. Yeah. Russian? Yeah, Russian. What's up with that? This guy, he's his name is Victor Soy. Victor Choi. He was like, uh, you know, right at the fall of like the USSR. He was basically like kind of the Kurt Cobain or like like Sex Pistols, like rev revolutionary like musician. Um, and he was half rush, like half Russian, half Korean. And this is the name of his band. This is it says Kino. That's the thing about Russia is like people think it's like Sweden or something where everyone's just like white, but it's actually so much influenced by Asia because all the stands like Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, they're like the the buffer between China and Russia. So they all look like Hapas. Yeah. Yeah. But, can you talk about like how that happened? Yeah. The, actual, the real event, like how that mm -hmm. happened way back? Yeah, um, so my dad, he uh, started selling shoes, uh, athletic shoes wholesale. Um, so he had like a small storefront right across a bridge from East Compton on, over 710 on Rosecrans. When the riots broke out, uh, it was one of those things that at first you couldn't tell. You were like, oh, it's probably stopped pretty soon, but then is like the day started progressing and then uh, police started losing control. They started barricading stuff. You could see it started to spread. And um, I think that's the thing about the riots that uh, a lot of people don't know is like, it wasn't just like South Central, like spread. And, you know, there was even outbreaks in like Long Beach. And, you know, so like my dad's uh, place got looted the fourth day, which was basically like the tail end of, of uh, the, riot, the riots. I know like Mexican uh, gangs and stuff were like offering assistance for money. <laughs> you know? oh, wow. Yeah, that's yeah, something that's, that's something you would never wow. hear about. But like, there's like a mob, you just, you know, like, is it worth it? And so he just left and let it get ransacked, ransacked. And it was like a tornado had just come through and, you know. Basically, um, it's a little different, but. yeah, my dad, you know, was, yeah, it was like, what if the kids got left this store? And I made it a women's shoe store because it's like, what, what business do these two brothers have running a women's shoe store? Well, a lot of immigrants, when they come here, they just figure out like, what is the business that I can do? And um, women's shoes seems like something that you're just trying to fill like a need for the neighborhood, which is, uh, I feel like a lot of immigrant businesses in those areas, like, you know, the reason that a lot of, Korean people had liquor stores or small gro groceries because the bigger chains didn't want to be in those neighborhoods. It's too, too much risk and uh, a lot of management uh, problems. So like, uh, that's where Korean people went into those neighborhoods and set up shop. What did you have? You must have other ones. Uh, me, like me, Gook, Gook, Paramount, uh, April 29, 1992. Um, and then, you know, a bunch of variations on fire, <laughs> you know, like, but yeah, I mean, Gook just seemed like, you know, I, I didn't mean for it to be, my intention wasn't if for it to be like shocking or have shock value, it was just like, there's a scene in the film that talks about the definition and I was like, well, uh, I want people to be curious as to like why you would name it a der derogatory term the you know actors like the, the store like people patrons uh, they didn't even know how to say it they were like gook like they're like you gooks get out of here and you're like oh no no that's not how you say it so it was weird to actually tell them how to say the word because I'm like oh I feel conflicted about this they don't know how to say it for a reason because it's becoming extinct like you're saying but um here I am like telling them how to properly say a derogatory term against my you know against me um I mean, it's good in a way, but it's also like a uh, conversation sheds light on how Asian American things just like are not, there's no light shine upon it that like it hasn't even, even the derogatory terms haven't stuck, you know, which is a weird sort of, yeah. I actually purposely, you know, I'm a huge Spike fan and, and no matter what, it just ends up like your influence ends up in the work you do. But the, you know, more of a direct, influence and more of a direct like uh, 
sort of like even visually was Lan. Yeah, and that was black and white. That was like a huge inspiration for me. And it's about three guys, and it's about like they're a different riot, but like uh, around the same time period though. Different, like they were different ethnicities. Yeah, like Algerian. And when I first saw it, I was like, whoa is just the fact that I didn't want people to sit through the first 15 minutes and dissect like is this period perfect or the car I don't I want to detract the, the, the attention away from like the color palette and and also another thing is just budget like I can't close down I can't buy out streets and dress it with like period perfect cars so it's like you, you have a little bit of leeway with the black and white but then it's much more lighting intensive and uh, the, wherever the, the direction of the sun is really important. Yeah, like that was like some of the first sort of investment meetings when I thought maybe we can get money from a more traditional uh, financier. They were like, first thing, don't make it black and white. We're not gonna be able to sell this film. You're putting yourself in the same category as documentaries in terms of sales. And I was like, well, then why make the film? <laughs> you know, I'm like, well, I, that's exactly what I don't wanna do. Like, um, and if we're gonna go there, we're gonna take a risk, like having basically no Caucasian people in the film in the first place. Why not go all the way? Uh -huh. I thought it was beautifully shot. Yeah, I think that was a huge credit to my DP. This guy, Anti Chang, he's uh, he's a Taiwanese uh, uh, cinematographer, and he's just it, like he brought me like a look sheet and uh, a mood a, a mood kind of sheet, and one of the things, <laughs> big things he had was um, Schindler's List. That was one of his big things was like, let's make this like the L.A. Rice Schindler, Schindler's List. I was like, oh my God, okay, whatever. Let's talk about it. But he's, he's great. He killed it. You know, people thought it was so like unorthodox that it's mostly a relationship between an Asian guy and an 11 year old black girl. They can't, they students can, can't comprehend that dynamic being played on screen. I'm like, no, it's like so not weird at all. If you, it, I, you just have to show them. I want to laser focus on like basically a friendship. Um, and how does the, the, all the external stuff with that being that time period, how does that affect the, that dynamic? I think that's more of an interesting look at that time period than talking about the riots. Because I wanted to make a film about the, the riots from a Korean American perspective, but, um, but the friendship was always a way, the, 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 the through line, the spine of the film. So what's it like directing yourself? It sucks. <laughs> I hate it. Um, because I don't get to protect my own performance. Like it's, you know, I really have to heavily rely on the DP having seen some rehearsals and stuff like that. So he kind of knows what I want. And then it's more uh, exercise of preparation because if I didn't prep it right, then um, I can't really be trying to do things on the fly too much um, if I'm directing myself. Because I have to just have to know that I did the prep work that when we're shooting, I'm not worrying about my performance um, but it's cool in other ways because it's like a shorthand with the actors because we did about a month a month and a half of rehearsals and I've already worked out all the kinks with them like directly like we I w was rehearsing with them so like when we stepped on set it wasn't like some other actor was taking my place another cool thing is I can direct through acting so if it's on like say you know Simone's co the girls coverage I can deliver my line differently to get to get her to react differently, uh, so I can provoke her more or whatever to get her to do a different thing, which is like a shorthand. I don't have to explain it. I just make her react to what I'm doing. It's a way, different way of directing. Um, um, and I purposely, my role was written not to like try to outshine anyone. It's like, who are these characters, and how do I make them look like LeBron James? <laughs> Working with from your own dad for movies. He was incredibly grumpy and difficult and just like any Asian dad, like, why do I have to do this? And, but once, once we got into the motion of it, it was really interesting because I got to see that he actually is an actor. He would ask the right questions. He would be concerned about his wardrobe and like what that meant. And to see like an older Korean man be asking those and operate in that way was really weird because, you know, as an actor, you you do all that stuff, but like to see your parent, parental figure do it is weird. And once we got in the motion, like maybe like the first, the first scene, the first few takes was weird, but after we got the ball rolling, like it felt like any other shoot and, um, and he respected me as a director. And then, but then at the end of every day, like he would turn back dad mode and he'd be like, um, you know, like, 
bitch me out about some stupid shit that has nothing to do with the shoot. Like, did you do? Did you take care of this thing that? And I'm like, oh my god, whatever. But um, but uh, yeah, it was like you know, it's part of the reason I want to make the film is like to be able to have those scenes with him, so I can, I can, I now have that forever. Was he into it? The whole idea of the movie because he lived it, so you're kind of. No, he wasn't because he was like in his eyes. He was like, why do you want to relive that time? Why do you want to re, why do you want to reopen that wound and talk about uh, such a kind of uh, traumatic time in, in our family's history and also like in like uh, immigrant, like you know, Korean history. He just didn't understand like why you want to talk about that. And my thing is like, no, that's why you have to. It's like, it's a part of our history. And if we don't tell it from our perspective, then someone else will tell it for us. And I think that's not what I want. Um, so it was. It took a, a bit for him to understand why, um, but I think like once he saw how people reacted to it, he's like, oh okay, I, I guess like, I guess it was worth it. <laughs> that yeah. was kind of was that kind of yeah that yeah absolutely. And that was the thing is like people are some people are like kind of upset that I didn't go more into that, but that's not what the film is about, and it wasn't like what I wanted. People get really uh, sort of upset with me that I didn't want to focus on that. But again, like this is my story and like, like through my lens and, and it was really a film about friend, like unifying. And also that I was playing with the sort of like the idea of like, you think this is going to be a conventional like uh, LA 92 film and it's not going to be anything like that. So in the beginning, I show these things where like, you're like, oh my God, is this going to be like, the, ang the, the, the typical, like, do the right thing Korean grocer, but it's not. I'm gonna humanize this guy. Like, I'm gonna make you hate him, and then I'm gonna make you like him. Um, and that was sort of like what I was playing with with that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you know, that's the thing is like, that was another thing where, where I had to show people that, like, on script, it said, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Fuck you. It was just like seven fuck yous in a row, like in the script, and people were like, what is this? And I'm like, no, it'll be funny, trust me. But people were at the script phase was like, this is stupid, you know, but it, I think it works. So uh, at a Sundance, um, Samuel Golden bought it. Um, our sort of rollout will start at uh, the Arclight Hollywood on August 18th. It's really important that people go out and see it the first weekend and that first week because um, that will dictate whether they expand it or or that's the or if you're just gonna see it on Netflix next. Um, yeah, and I think it's important like if you are interested in Asian American film or Asian American voices that uh, you support with like you know monetary like support because otherwise uh, it doesn't talk, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't give any basis for studios to desire to make film from you know, the Asian American point of view. About this boy band thing. <laughs> yeah, that's BGA, the best. BGA. BGA. Um, you know, it's kind of a uh, Ryan, he does uh, brain, brain child. Um, he just wanted to parody a uh, K-pop you know, band and K-pop music in general. And, you know, it's funny because it starts off, our first song was, you know, I Need to Take a Poo. Not dong, It ended up like being a parody, but like our second one starts to be sort of more like legit in a way. Like kind of like more traditional, like an actual K-pop and like people are treating us like an actual K-pop band. Like um, we were on top of the iTunes K-pop charts and like, but it's like, it's also so cool that, that uh, you can make something so as a joke and for it to like get so much traction. Um, it also is like, you know, conversation of like, even like uh, how global sort of Asian kind of like, you know, pop culture has become. I think with playing the young people, like early on, it was such a sort of like a teenage rebellious, like I want to grow out of this, like as soon as I can. I don't want to be playing like, I want to be like, I always wanted to be like the the Asian Sean Penn or something, play like those meaty Mystic River roles or like, after a while is just you have to look at yourself very honestly <laughs> and it just look young. Uh, so there comes a point where you just have to embrace it. 
So I'm like, okay, how do I? Then I just gotta pick the roles that are interesting. Um, so I'll do like a commercial thing like 21 over Twilight, but then I will also do a bunch of indie weird sort of things or take a risk with like films like Soul Searching. Is it Harry Yoon who's Korean? Yeah, Steve Yoon, Ki Hong, you know, um, Daniel Day Kim, Daniel Day Kim, Ken Jeong, John Cho. yeah, Randall Park, um, <laughs> like it's so many, yeah. They'll create one Asian role and they're like, they don't know what they want and that's what's frustrating is that like, why are all of us fighting for this one role? Um, which goes back to like creation. It's like, I think that was a big eye-opening experience is when you make your own stuff, you don't look at it the same way. What kind of accent were they trying to make you do? That? Just a blanket Asian. What is an Asian accent? That's what I've been trying to That's what's out. annoying is like, they just say, give me an Asian accent. You're like, well, that could be Cantonese. It can be like from mainland. It could be Vietnamese, Filipino, Korean. They're all so different in nature. And I'm like, what does that mean? You, like, you didn't do one? I didn't even go in the room. Like, because I heard, I found out that like, they were gonna trick you. So they bring you in the room, and because it, what, they, they, it makes no mention of an accent in the script, it doesn't need it. And when you get in the room, they're like, okay, we want it with an accent. But like, when you're already in that vulnerable position, situation where you're in the, the position of like, I want this job, it's really unfair to like, all of a sudden spring that on because ethically like, uh, do you say no? I'm just gonna walk out, or, or I'll do it. Like it just puts the actor in a very weird position. But uh, it's changing slowly. I think, yeah, you know. But I can't stress enough. But that's why I like making from our point of view. But also making good shit. You know, like, dude. Like, yeah, it's cool to like make your own films like from Asian. But like, dude, come on, mate. Just like at least like think it through and try to make it at least semi good. Cause like it doesn't make any like, it doesn't do anyone service if it's shitty. You know, like this feels like 20 years ago. Dude, I was actually yeah, I was sitting in a, you know, one of the Asian film festivals with Leo, and it was like the same dragon lady doing the traditional like, um, in the courtyard doing the dance, the dragon like, or doing tai chi, like the whole family doing tai chi, and I'm like. Phew. Dude, Joy Luck Club is like over 20 years ago now, and like I'm like, how are we still making the same film? about like family tiger mom bullshit. Like I'm like, and millennials don't want to see that. They get turned off. They're like, what is this like dated crap? Like I, they want to see like all of a sudden like some Kendrick Lamar song playing. Like and like, like Asian people just like have some like super drug heist. I don't know. Like that's what I want to see. Tell Flex to drop a bomb on this shit. Um, that's blinded, more blind casting kind of stuff, right? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, but it's like, yeah, and trying to get the community behind the film, that's a whole nother, it's a whole nother like five hour conversation. Great. Awesome, well, thanks yeah. man, I think I covered everything I needed. Yeah, dude, yeah, thanks for having me.